All right, everyone. So today is September 20th. And my oh my was today a, a, an awesome day on the market once again. Um, so as you all know, if you've been watching this channel for quite some time, uh, this summer was super, super, super slow. I mean, there was really just no reason to be long biased at all. And I had so many people emailing me, sending me DMs, sending me tweets, asking me, you know, when is the market going to heat back up again? Is it ever going to heat back up again? And I said, of, of course it will. It, it always does. The market moves in a cycle. It, it goes from hot months to slow months. And generally, historically speaking, summer is the slower season of the market. But as we get closer to fall and, and winter, uh, the market starts to pick up. And we're seeing that happen right now live. And, and even more so, it, it seems like oh, right now we are in a situation that is just like uh, the Bitcoin mania back in early, uh, early this year and late last year, uh, except for right now it's it's cannabis. Um, we're seeing so many cannabis stocks just do irrational moves, and that leads to massive short squeezes. So this is going to be a bit more of an ex a bit more of a advanced topic. Um, I'm not going to explain everything I'm going to say. I expect you guys to already know most of this stuff. If not, I have hundreds of video lessons. I have a course. I have a chat room. Um, so you can find the information. So let's just start off with uh, NBEV because this is the one that everyone's talking about. I mean, first of all, look at this volume. 129.9 million shares traded today. That is absolutely unreal. Let's just go to Finviz real quick. So looking at Finviz, we can say that the flow is just around 30 million shares. Here it says it's 34 million, but we also have to keep in mind that uh, institutions own 10%, so that's around 3 million shares of that. So pretty big float, but I mean, considering the volume, we rotated the float, what is that, over four times today. Um, and float rotations call for massive short squeezes because when there is so much volume traded it traps uh, the shorts and essentially how it does this is by just having this clean pattern where it just keeps on stair stepping up it never ever even broke below its previous high of day this causes a short trap so you can see here yesterday we had this very very nice squeeze over the 425 area and what happened is that at first, it looked like there was massive resistance here in the 425. So lots of shorts were probably basing their uh, trades off of that area. Um, it broke down, it broke under VWAP, and usually the breakdown under VWAP uh, is a reason to add into your short. And the reason why lots of shorts did this probably was because yesterday we saw TLRY just absolutely panic sell and uh, essentially the reason why NBEV was running in the first place was kind of because of TLRY because it was uh, the sympathy play of TLRY. So everyone everyone was expecting that, okay, once TLRY cracks down, so will the rest of them, NBEV, CGC, CRO, and so forth. So once we saw this massive crack on NBEV, lots of shorts thought, okay, this is the top. It's, it's done for. Let's add into... Uh, the weakness and let's just make this crash down below VWAP. I found support very fast at 350 which if you look at uh, yesterday pre-market that was the top so it never ever ever broke below it used previous res resistance as support and that would have been a very very awesome buying opportunity there. Uh, yesterday I actually bought the breakout of this and I traded that so I never got back in here on the dip just because I was, you know, a bit too scared to. That's no problem, though. Um, but then it caused this massive short squeeze where it ran up from uh, the 350s back up to 425. And then it, uh, it retested the resistance at 425, and then it just exploded through. And you can tell that a large reason why this popped so much was because of lots of shorts covering. And the reason why you can tell that is just look at the volume. I mean, the volume on this candle, 1.11 million shares traded in one minute. 
or, or I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. This one right here. Oh yeah, 1.11 million shares traded in one minute. You can probably assume that, okay, um, that is probably lots of shorts, big shorts who trade 10, 50, 100,000 share positions. All of them, they're covering after the break. They don't want to get squeezed. So that causes this massive pop. And of course, here we went long on the, on the break over this. I talked about this yesterday in my video lesson, so you can check that out. But essentially, we did the same exact thing today. The, the price action today was the same exact thing we saw yesterday. I mean, almost to a T. You can see we had very strong resistance here at pre-market, 635. We get this washout that traps lots of shorts. And this time, all the shorts thought, okay, once we break below 550, that's the time to pile on and, and smash this back down. So you can see all morning we're trading within this range from 610 to 550. And then we finally hit below that price. It dropped down to only 530. That's basically a fake out because you would imagine once you break a huge level of support like that, I mean, we would have to retest at least $5, but you can see it bounced off of this five, uh, 525 and 530 area. And then it just squeezed back up, trapped so many shorts here, and it shot from the 530s straight up to 635 in like, I mean, three minutes. Um, absolutely crazy price action, just so much volume on this thing. And, and then you can see that it just turned into, once again, another obvious short squeeze pattern. The third test is likely the one that breaks out. You can see we ran up here, we hit 635, boom, we broke out. And then we hit a high of 750. Now, I believe I traded that breakout. Let me just, uh, actually, no, I don't think I did. Um, I was just way too scared of touching this one. Uh, and the main reason why is because I usually don't like to trade the stock that is, you know, so overcrowded. Uh, NBEV is a situation where the stock is just so overcrowded. I mean, you can tell by the volume that everyone is trading this. We almost had $1 billion flow through NBEV today. So most of the day, I did not play it. Uh, the time that I did play it was at, actually at the very end of the day, uh, right here when... It was retesting 750, which just, I mean, look at this. It did the same exact thing as yesterday. We had, we had clear resistance at 750. It faded off and it washed out underneath VWAP. And this time it actually trapped shorts even harder because on the bounce back up to VWAP, it acted as resistance. So I can almost guarantee that there were so many shorts adding into the position because like, okay, this is finally it. This is finally the end of NBEV. It is resisting VWAP. Nope. Catches support at 625 and, and it just squeezes right on through, squeezes all the shorts, hits a high of 750, rejects it the first time, made it look super, super, super weak. I bet you shorts added back in there saying, oh, look at that. It didn't break on the third test. Nope, made a higher low, held above $7, and then boom, squeezed right at the end of the day. Now, this breakout is one I bought. Let me just get off, up my chart real fast. So here's NBEV. Now you can see, I tried trading this uh, one time right on this test. I bought uh, right here at 734 1000 shares anticipating the test because of the volume reading level two it failed so i quickly got out now the thing with these overcrowded uh stocks is that you cannot treat them like regular stocks you have to get in and get the hell out you cannot uh hold and hope to have a massive move especially intraday um just because there are so many people trading this you can tell how much it, it just whipsaws back and forth it's not like a very clean chart. It zigzags a lot. So you have to just get in and get out and make that 10, 20 cent profit. All right. So you can see that's what I did here on the first time. I bought at 734, anticipating the breakout over 
750 based on the volume. We tested it and then we failed. I sold at 745. It dropped back down. And then uh, the next time I tested, it did break out. I bought into that strength at an average of the 754. I took half my profits, like I said, once I was up 10 cents because I didn't really know what was going to happen. And then I held on the rest for after hours because I had a very nice pop up. It was squeezing very nicely. You can see here at this price, it was about, uh, let me just expand this. At that price, it was almost near $8. So at that point, it was closing strong. It was squeezing out a lot of shorts that had massive volume at the end of the day. And I said, you know what? Maybe this can squeeze more. Let me hold on the rest. I had 500 shares at, at 754 and I sold those shares at 950. So made $2 per share there. Uh, and that was just unbelievable. My original plan was to swing those overnight, but I mean, who will ever deny locking in $2 per share that quickly, that easily? Yes, I know it can go higher, but I'm the type of trader that uh, like once I see the money, I just want to lock it in. I'm very conservative. I'm very safe. I don't want to have big, massive wins. I'd rather use lots of size and get that nice, consistent win. Now, of course, on this trade, I did not use that much size, but that was because I just wasn't so confident in NBEV. It was trapping people left and right. Um, it was so overcrowded. I just wanted to capitalize on the fact that I knew on the break over 750, we would have a bunch of shorts covering just based on the fact that this is a short squeeze pattern. The fact that every single day it held the previous high and never broke underneath and never gave uh, the shorts like a chance to really uh, exit their position with profits. Lots of shorts on this lost money because they kept averaging up, averaging up, and it never dropped back down enough to where they would break even or make profits. And that's essentially how a short squeeze works. Um, you just keep making the higher lows and higher highs and you trap shorts along the way. So that was NBEV. That's the main one I want to talk about. Now, of course, I did take other trades too. Um, I traded AS, uh, what was it? Hey, WSM. I bought this one on the break over uh, the 750s with small size because this one had very low volume. And I took those profits at 790, so made around 40 cents per share there. But I mean, that one, I'm glad I took my profits because that was part of my plan. But wow, it squeezed up so much more. Hit a high of $11 on that initial rally. So I left a ton on the table. But that's fine, you know, I'll do the same thing next time. Maybe next time I'll use more size and I'll be able to uh, exit my position in pieces. The fact that I only had 500 shares, it didn't really make it worth my time to exit in pieces because of commission costs. And uh, and yeah, so one more I did trade was ASCMA. Uh, and this one was a very nice trade, ASCMA. I found this one on my scanner. And this one reminded me a ton of ALT yesterday. So let me just bring up these two charts, ALT and ASCM and I have to give a shout out over to one of the members in Trade Buddy. His name is Aston uh, because yesterday he traded uh, this one. He bought the support at at a $7 range and he sold at $17. So he made $10 per share, not 10 cents, $10 and he had a thousand shares. So, uh, you know, this one reminded me a ton of, or uh, it, it reminded me a lot about ALT just due to the fact that it had a massive run up and then it was holding VWAP. Now, now I know on ALT it it didn't hold VWAP, but it kind of did the same exact thing. I like them more actually, like when they do hold VWAP, just because uh, VWAP acts as another type of support. So ASCMA, we had this massive rally from 110 up to 230s. We pulled back and we held, you know, very close to the highs. This is a prime time uh, characteristic of a run in the end of the day when you when you have a massive morning spike and it holds very close to the highs and it never breaks down, especially down under VWAP. And uh, I was buying this one. Let me get the chart. Um, where is it? 
I was buying this one, ASCMA. Do I have that one? No, one second. Here it is. ASCMA, okay. There it is. ASCMA, I had 2,500 shares and an average of like 204. I had another 3,000 shares waiting to be bought near 195, but it just never dropped that low. And my risk was 187. So always, always, always have a plan for your trade. Know where you're going to buy, where you're going to uh, take profits, and where you're going to cut your loss every single time. If you don't know that, do not take the trade. And you can see this one, I followed my plan perfectly. My entire plan was to buy this one near support, looking to take profits at the high of daybreak. And you can see I bought here and I sold right there. So followed my plan perfectly. And let me just get up. Um, now, of course, all of these trades, I do give my plan um, within the trade buddy room. So of course, uh, if you've, if you believe that would help you out on your trading, the link is down below. Let me just find uh, ASCMA. Okay, it was above this. ASCMA, the five minute chart is interesting, holding view up so far. Building a position in, in ASCMA, this reminds me of ALT. Alerted it was getting volume. And, uh, and yeah, so very awesome trade there. Um, the just the main thing guys is you just have to have a plan for your trade and just always stick to it. I didn't know that ASCMA would hold and break out, but I knew that I've seen this pattern many, many, many times and the risk reward was worth it to go long buying into this weakness, buying in, in, into the support and just being patient and then selling into the strength. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this lesson. Um, if you did, please leave a like and hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, leave them down below or you can send me an email or uh, just message me on Instagram or Twitter. All my handles are down below and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.